the first module, um, we'll discuss the experimental task that we're using for this ERP lecture. We'll um, have a task that is known in psychology as the flanker task. So we have a, um, a sequence of trials, in our case here it's 300 something trials, with an intertrial interval of uh, two seconds plus minus one and a half. And at the beginning of each um, try, there's uh, or early in the try, there's an arrow being presented centrally. And that arrow is flanked by either congruent, same direction, or incongruent flanker arrows. Actually, the flankers appear usually shortly before the actual arrow. The purpose of these things is to is as follows. The subject is supposed to press either left or right button depending on the direction of the center arrow uh, and do it as fast as possible. And uh, the flankers tend to prime the person to, uh, in some cases, make errors and press basically the wrong button. And so uh, you can basically set it up so that the person makes frequent errors depending on time pressure uh, up to, say, 25%. In, uh, in this particular data that we're looking at, it's actually around 25%. So what we end up with here is <coughs> we have a sequence of around 300 trials. Uh, 25 is errors. Person is pressing the wrong button, and 75% is no errors. And now what we want to do is we want to predict whether the person on a given button press uh, in response to this kind of stimulus is making an error or not without knowing the label in advance. So uh, that's, a, that's a standard BCI task. and it's actually, in fact, practically useful. So say an operator is pressing a button, and it's either correct or incorrect. That's useful to know to a machine system. And uh, that's why that's actually you know, a, a potentially useful application. So um, talking about these features that we used last time with the peak properties, uh, these were OK for a single channel of EG and for very aggressive dimensionality reduction. If we're having multiple channels, um, the peak features are almost always going to be the same for every channel. You know, latency is the same. The amplitude is about the same. The, uh, OK, it's going to vary over channels. And the, the width is also always going to be pretty much the same. So um, we are basically not really gaining much by adding all these extra um, channels. And so we're not utilizing the information properly. We are also not really having spatial filters in there at all uh, so far. It's just random features. And so um, can we design a BCI which learns spatial filters, which focus in, in a computational manner on a source time course and, um, and basically extract a high fidelity version of the time course from the channel data? and then go on and extract features of the source signal, such as the amplitude and things like that in the subsequent process. Also, the other thing is that here we actually have a, a process that's not just a single peak. It's at least two peaks in there. Um, so uh, our peak detector wouldn't have worked anyway. So we want to design spatial filters, and basically we want to compute them. And so we need a rule to compute them. And it, it turns out that it's kind of funny. Um, a spatial filter is um, a linear mapping right, from multiple channels onto the output. And so most of the linear classifiers that are out there, including LDA, actually give you the optimal linear mapping under some assumption that goes in distributed signal and so on. So for this reason, um, a linear classifier, if applied properly, can actually implicitly learn um, an optimal or optimized spatial filter uh, and tell you how to weight the different channels properly, and thereby implicitly operate on source features. There is there's only one issue, and that is um, it only works if the features that you want to extract at the source time course, basically, are a, a linear transform of the channel features. So uh, if you want to, say, take spectral processes where you need to calculate variance and so on, that's nonlinear. And it it's not a linear transform of channel features. But if you're taking something like averages of the source time course in certain time periods, say, that's a linear transform of the channel averages, in a sense. 
based the relationship is a spatial filter. And the other part is on the classifier. The classifier must give you basically the equivalent solution no matter how you scale and rotate your data you know, in, in the feature space. Um, because, uh, again, in a sense, the, um, or under linear transforms, because otherwise, I mean, otherwise it wouldn't be necessarily the optimal classifier anyway. So LDA is one such thing which has this property.